This is episode 194 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome to episode 194 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Today, I have Erwin Zito on the show again. Erwin's been on the show many times before, and I really enjoyed chatting with him because he is a entrepreneur through and through. Erwin runs many different businesses. He started as a real estate broker, real estate investor. Now he's a real estate trainer. He does training on options trading and other things. He runs conferences. He's always figuring out how to one-up himself. He also has a podcast. So uh, we dug into a lot of what Irwin's up to, his thoughts on the current market, what's happening, what he would do if he was a newbie in this environment, because obviously it's it's challenging out there right now. It's a very different market than it was six months ago even. And uh, obviously all us real estate investors are adapting and figuring out what our strategy is from here. As always, I ask if you enjoy the show, please leave a five-star rating and a positive review to help more people find the show. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Let us know what you think. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into episode 194 with Erwin Zito. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got Erwin Zito, friend of the show, back on the show for fourth time, third time? I don't know. Somewhere in there. I don't know what I had for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, yeah, Erwin, it's always great talking to you. One of the things that I love getting into is you're an entrepreneur, like to your core, always doing stuff that uh, that's inspiring and aiming big, right? Not small stuff. So this is uh, this is a conversation I wanted to have with you again because we kind of do this about once a year. So anyways, how you been and what have you been up to? It's been crazy. Yeah. Not enough golf. <laughs> no. Yeah, we golfed like almost once a week last year. Pretty consistent. Basically, didn't you, were, you didn't and I were the most consistent golfer yeah. at making it out. Yeah, yeah, not so much this year. It's amazing how babies will do that. So, um, but yeah, so one of the things you're doing, and I'll recap for anybody who hasn't hasn't uh, followed the previous episodes. You had Wealth Hacker, I think, 2019, right? Yeah. You had Grant Cardone, huge event. I went to that one, and well, thanks. There was a thousand people there, probably. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. So big, obviously huge to get Grant Cardone. Um, most people would not even think to do that. But before that, you had iWin, which is sort of your real estate training and your team, real estate team as well, yeah. right? So real, your We're realtor. educational focused yeah. uh, real, real team of realtors that focus on income properties. Yeah, so income properties. Um, when did you start all that? Oh, well, I started as an investor in 2005. And then when I couldn't find a realtor, who understood how to work with investors, uh, I decided to get licensed for myself. I had a full-time job. I wasn't interested in becoming a realtor. Yeah. But then uh, it, it starts stuck with me how we were paying a lot of money in commissions for not really getting any quality level of service who under, who understood that could, that could service me and that was no one special. Yeah. But at least, you know, I, I come from a business training like yourself. Yeah. I literally remember having a conversation with uh, my bro the, the broker owner, the owner of the brokerage, so very successful in his own right. I told him, "Hey, I want to buy near, uh, I want to buy near the Red Hill Valley Parkway." Yeah, which was not that old at the time. And he said, "Why would you ever want to do that? It's already been priced in." Oh yeah. Well, prices were around two hundred grand back then, and even with this dip, I think it's well worth about seven hundred grand now. Yeah. So priced in it was, eh? <laughs> Point being, uh, I couldn't find someone to, to uh, yeah. service our needs. Right. So what do you do then? Yeah. You got you to do yourself. So I got myself licensed with the intention just to service my own family. Um, and then uh, because I was going to ne uh, other me networking meetings, my friends would say, uh, hey, can you help me with what you got? I, I don't know I'm brand new to this. I don't know Hamilton. Can you help me with what you do? Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. And then I started making money. So so it was like just regular realtor work at first. Regular realtor, but it was just still investor focused. Yeah. Because and then it morphed into training once like you saw, okay, hey, this is profitable. I'm helping people. Yeah. Why not educate them and then do it on a larger scale? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because once everyone understands the business case for real mm -hmm. estate investing, because to me it's still a small business. Yeah. And you know, I still look at all yeah. the economic factors that drive the decision and it all kind of points to you need hard assets, preferably the self liquidating type. Right. Yeah. And then treat it like a business. Did you like had you already read like Rich Dad Poor Dad? Was that part of your education before you did real estate investing? That was my trigger because yeah. uh, back when I was in in business school, mm -hmm. uh, everyone was talking about getting consult getting a six figure job in consulting yeah. or investment banking. 
didn't work out because uh, uh, I was in fourth year when 9-11 happened. Oh, okay. So I entered one of the worst recessions job, whatever, in yeah. the history of you know, the last 50 years probably. Yeah. Right? So then there was like no jobs. And then when I did get a job, I wasn't making much. Uh, and then, you know, <laughs> I was <laughs> Self-admit, I was probably a bit of a socialist <laughs> while while in university, coming out, see my paycheck, all the deductions. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my girlfriend at the time's dad uh, recommended I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'm like, I went to yeah. business school. What do I need to read this for? Right. And I read it, and like, this is a lot of this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I remember that. I think we talked about this. Like, I got people in an Ivy saying, oh, you should be investing in stocks. Like, what's your portfolio look like? I'm like, I don't have a portfolio. I have student debts. <laughs> like my interest rates, like 5%, you know, at the time it didn't make any sense to me. Like, cause I heard people, you know, were getting like 3% or whatever. And I know we'll dig into that later. Uh, but there's just, it's almost, it's almost too institutionalized the way business school is. Uh, it doesn't teach you to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial minded, uh, investor. Not so much. I mean, I, I'm not saying at all, like certainly there is an element of that. And even when I went there, I did take some courses on entrepreneurship, but I think you and I both know you can only know what entrepreneurship is by trying, by doing something, yes. Yes. By, by doing your first one. So not to say there wasn't anything there like that, but it it was sparse. I think it's kind of changing now though. We were just talking before. Now they even have a real estate course at Western. I don't know who teaches it. We don't, yeah, we don't know how good it is, but. Yeah. If you teach, if you teach stuff out of a textbook, you're going to be... You'll be able to do textbook real estate. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, and I don't like to say it's because I really I don't want that to be true. But those those who can't do teach, <laughs> it's not true always, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were our our year was lucky in that our yeah. entrepreneurship, our our marketing, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial marketing instructor mm-hmm. was the owner of Bombay. Yeah. Uh, the furniture company. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then you got some really good insight really from somebody good. who did. And I know right. people who have gone back to the business school to teach. People who are entrepreneurs on their own, they just wanted to give back. And yeah, that yeah. I love. Like, yeah. you know, in, in a big part of the real estate community like we're in, like it's great sharing knowledge with others. Mm-hmm. You end up doing business with them, mm-hmm. you know, private lending, joint venture opportunities. All these things come from educating people. So mm-hmm. uh, as we were talking about before we got on this. So mm-hmm. that's the nice difference with our community. So, um, but yeah. I wanted. Just one yeah, last thing I want to throw in that is. To be an entrepreneur, to be a business owner, and to have payroll, Mm -hmm. I don't know how how many professors can speak to that. Yeah, like just the feeling of knowing you have to meet payroll, like, hey, Thursdays. The feeling of not being able to make payroll. Yeah, if you have to scrounge together the money to to pay it. Yeah. Because a lot lot of the professors, they consult, Mm -hmm. but they're a solo business. They never had payroll, right? Yeah. They never had tenants. They never had, you know, they didn't have the full experience of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, and you can never really um, get again get that unless you try it. And I sometimes people will point out to me like, "Oh, wow, you've got a lot of experience." I never thought of that. Like as an entrepreneur, like I never thought of it like that. It all happened so slowly. You know, bring on one employee, bring on two. Maybe not for you, you went faster. But for me, it all happened so slowly. I look back, I'm like, "Wow, okay, yeah, we did get pretty far along here." Um, and yeah, sometimes it's hard. But I, I think that this is one of those things that you kind of have to adjust your lifestyle so that you don't worry about those things. But I agree with you completely. You're, uh, <laughs> there'll always be some element of worry. Hey, folks, I just wanted to take a quick break from the episode to tell you about the GTA West REI meetup. So this is a brand new meetup. It's uh, a restart of the old Greater Hamilton REI meetup, which I used to host before the first lockdown. Well, we're bringing it back with a new name. Uh, we're going to have uh, our first meetup happening at Clifford Brewing Company in Hamilton, and that's on November 3rd, 2022, uh, 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. So really hope you can make it. We used to get about 100 people out to our events. They were a great networking opportunity, like-minded investors getting side by side, having conversations, having a beer, and uh, and just talking shop. So uh, many of you who know my story, I always uh, was a big fan of the networking at meetups and and uh, different real estate events, but I never much cared for sitting through the presentations. So this is an opportunity if you really just want to get uh, into a room and talk to people who are doing things. Uh, I highly recommend it, and I will be there, and I will look forward to seeing you there. If you want to go to this event, uh, it's very important that you register. So the Facebook group where the event is hosted is in the show notes for this episode. Please just make sure you click on that, add yourself to the group, and then add yourself to the event so that we know 
you're coming and can make sure we notify the facility of how many people are going to be coming. Thanks, and let's get back to the episode. But yeah, that's that's the kind of the past we've chosen, and and that's all, I've done a lot of introspection about that as right, right now as well, just because of the market that we're in mm -hmm. and where things are going, and yeah, I'm always thinking about these things. That's why I, swear, yeah. that's why I have way more gray hair than you do. Really? I don't know. I'm, I'm competing with you for that. Um, okay, but let's dig, dig in a little bit more to the journey. So you started dealing in real estate, um, started doing some of the education. Is that when I went started? So way back then, like 2010 time, or is that like more like 2015? It's just a natural evolution. Yeah. You know, as a, as a realtor, pretty quickly I was busy uh, mm. because Hamilton was in high demand among investors. So I recruited my, one, of my, uh, one of my clients to become a, a realtor. He actually mm. wanted to be a proper manager. Yeah. And like, let me save you a whole lot of headache. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And then the business just naturally expanded as, yeah. as we got busier. We were very great, lucky and grateful to receive many referrals from our clients. So we've grown largely organically. Yeah. And then also uh, through our own marketing efforts, we've grown that way. And so it just expanded. And then part of the reason why we did the, the, the monthly networking meetings was, again, yeah. uh, because I always, the business always started with me as the customer, me as yeah. the, uh, as who I think my customer is. Yeah. I'm pretty demanding. I'm pretty hard on myself. Uh, I have a lot of questions. So I think a realtor, for example, which to me is like a high pay consultant, mm -hmm. should be able to answer my questions. Yeah. 100%. Or be able to find out, find those answers to my questions. Yeah. Care enough to. Right. And, and do that. Yeah. And so that's how the business just grew. Yeah. And like, for example, if I would buy this property, I'd let my client know I would buy this property. If yeah. I don't buy it. I might buy it. Right. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had that problem with, with some clients where you actually like ended up probably never took it from them, but they said they didn't. So you just grabbed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, happened to me actually yeah. multiple times. Just stuff I was looking at. You know, you're working with the right realtor if they're interested in the same property. Also creates a challenge because yeah. then they're, you're like, well, my question was, why would you give me the good deal? Like, you know, why would why wouldn't you take it and you'll give me the second best deal? And I'm, the scenario with the realtor I worked with for a long time, like, you know, he did take the best ones for him. But I still got really great deals. All they right. just they worked a little bit better for me, especially because I was okay with doing some new construction, adding additions and stuff like that. And right, right, right. he didn't want to. But you kind of have to know that angle, right? I guess yeah. in your case, like were you doing a lot of burrs or were you doing mostly like long term and hold, everything. a little mix of everything? Yeah, flips when we, too. When we started, uh, I've only been like a like a silent like a passive partner in flips. Okay. I, I'm very greedy. I want to, I want all the all the returns. Yeah. So I'd rather hang on to something. Yeah. And let it appreciate rather than just like, you know, kill the golden goose. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's when I think of you as an investor, I think long term investor because you've had uh, like 10 properties for quite some time, right? Uh, current portfolio is about 11 properties. Yeah. Uh, I've hold, I've held 40 different properties all through. Yeah. Uh, in total. And again, for different reasons, I sold them just because it wasn't the yeah. best use. Okay. Like, for example, the last property I sold, I wasn't like in the college student rental model. Um, I couldn't value add the property anymore, so I sold it mm -hmm. and then bought a really ugly house near McMaster University. Yeah. You know, moldy, cockroaches, yeah. basement leaked, knob and two wiring, everything, everything, right? I'm actually shocked the bank lent me, lent me money on this property. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everything was wrong with it. You know, got it for a great price. You know, it's appreciated mm -hmm. significantly. And uh, now is also the time for like payback time for yeah. student landlords is my rents went from like, you know, like 525 a room um now the going rate's gonna be over 800 bucks a room so yeah. i'll be able to rent out this house for like five six grand now so you still got it rented out with students it is yes yeah. but the next time they turn over yeah i'm gonna be asking at least 800 a room it's gone crazy i had so i sold it now but i had one that was 860 a bedroom which was unprecedented i did that three years ago i sold the house to my friend uh last year because i was taking money down south and he let the had let the turnover happen and re rented it out for twelve fifty a bedroom. What was so special about this place? That's like a that's like a single bedroom <laughs> rental. Yeah, well, it's I always said like I never planned on selling it. Um, I always said it was like the best student rental right. in London. But those are has, also the best investments. Yeah, investors and, and just I think that's a great point to highlight. If you're going to invest, it should be something you plan on holding forever. Yeah. Well, plan plan for that because you may have to. You may have to. <laughs> That's the especially yeah. now, like watching the market come down. Like this is that moment that I was always preparing for, and in my head, I was always thinking, like you could speculate all you want on values and appreciation, but if you're wrong, uh, you sure want to make sure it's a property you don't mind hanging on yeah. to, because otherwise it's gray hairs. And I know that from experience of holding onto properties, I did not want. There were mm -hmm. nothing but headaches for years on years. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and that's a great teacher. Don't do that again. And that's 
that's exactly why I changed the way I approached it. And many people are hurting for that right now. Yeah. They didn't stress test. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is one of the things I wanted to get into today. Like, you know, in, in hard times and I know like, so you have multiple businesses. One of them is stock hacker, which obviously a lot of people who have invested in stocks have been hurt. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like you said, there's some, who was it? The guy that wrote that, the first book that you had uh, kind of Derek Foster? suggested, Derek Foster. Yeah. 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 He's up, right? He's all he's positive on the year. <laughs> but most people, so who are selling, you know, options. Average human being, average normal yeah. human beings are all. They yeah, all most people down. got hurt. They should be because the market's down, what, 30, 40 percent on the year? It depends which one. The the uh, like the S&P 500 is about 20 right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. Better than crypto. Down. You're probably thinking crypto. Bitcoin's Crypt probably down like 60 percent. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been following it super close. Never, never really good. interest. Yeah, a kind little, like a little spectator. <laughs> So are you still are you still doing or selling options right now? Uh, mostly shorts. Shorts, as in like I'm shorting the market because that seems to be the direction. Those okay. are my prop, most profitable trades. Okay. So uh, they are uh, calculated bets that the market's going to continue down or okay. neutral. So you're placing bets that the market's going to go down or neutral or neutral. So if it goes sideways, I make money. If it goes down, I make money. Okay. The only way I can lose money is it's got to go up a lot. Okay. Uh, but it ain't, doesn't seem to be going that way. No, and with the continuous rate hikes doesn't seem like we're at risk of that just yet yeah. and all these i think we're gonna have a lot of a painful winter for much of the world yeah uh, all this all these people that wanted green energy and like no to nuclear no to oil yeah i mean <laughs> it's you gonna think, be expensive <laughs> you you think the uh, the logical way to approach that would be let's make sure that these other things work first you know like solar yeah. doesn't work at night and you know wind yeah. if it's not windy and you don't have any sunlight then yeah. you have no electricity yeah. let's, let's not gamble our energy policy on russia you know yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot of a lot of craziness happening but i mean kind of knowing where inflation's heading and there probably is another rate hike coming or two uh, or two even this year yeah for, for sure one this year right who well knows? nothing's for sure but who knows so i i you know I would, i'm out and about as a sherway garden on the weekend yeah and it's busy and well, I, people, I dress like this right yeah i'm like my outfit's worth less than 200 bucks mm -hmm. <laughs> and people are wearing like each piece of clothing they're wearing is 200 bucks including yeah. their socks and their underwear and their and their shoes and like well there's a cultural like, yeah there's a cultural um habit that's yeah. not going to change easily it's going to take something pretty dramatic. So I don't know how far things go up. Like I don't either. Part of me thinks like, and, and we said this kind of almost jokingly on the podcast, like what if things go to 10%? We're not that far off at this point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, into the sixes now. Right. It just, it really just depends on a few, a few variables right, right. and it, it could happen. But then complete the thought though. Yeah. If interest rates are 10%, what's real inflation? What's inflation then? Oh man. Uh, Real 14, inflation 17? is, yeah, exactly. Like you're still, you're still cheaper. I, I think, and, and that's not really so much the, the problem. I mean, I think no matter what they're under, under reporting inflation. Yes, so, so even if you're paying 10%, you're probably still winning. I think it's, it's the ability to weather that storm and make those payments. I mean, anyone who locked into a five year, like last year, I locked in a couple of properties into yeah. a five year. I'm like, there's no way rates are going to go down further than two. <laughs> I mean, they could, but not much. I wish we locked in more. But they sure could go up yeah. and a lot. Yeah. And especially with the irresponsible spending, you, mm -hmm. you kind of figured it was going to come. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, like, how do you look at it as an investor? What do you do right now? And what would you do if you were just getting started? Like looking at in real estate, like say you didn't own a property, you were still working a job, mm -hmm. you were working out of school. Like, what would you do now? So what we did was we did lock in um close to half our portfolio mm -hmm. uh under two uh like around six last year last year yeah okay and then the rest uh the market was already going against us yeah um we switched to interest only okay uh we're at scotia shout out to scotia uh private wealth um oh so just like a line so it's, it's basically a line yeah right it's so it is a line mm -hmm. just not a great loan to value um, but you know, for a line for interest only fair. Right? Okay. And then the interest rates, I think like prime. Um, but again, I we don't mean, have to pay, we don't have to pay principal. So we're able to mm -hmm. keep our cash flow reasonable. Yeah. And we're, our plan is to hold on. Um, we're, we don't have no plans to sell. This is not the market I want to be selling in. Yeah. If RBC is right, RBC declared last week, they think the bottom to me is going to be spring. So we're talking about you know, yeah. six months away. Of continuous fall of property values. Yeah. They're just saying that'll yeah. be the bottom of the market. Yeah. So if they're right, I don't know if they're right. No one knows they're right. Yeah. They're right or wrong. You know, so many things can happen between now and then. Um, but yeah, if I'm a beginner, mm -hmm. I will be looking for deals. 
So for example, uh, I get, I, I receive alerts uh, when properties get listed. Um, one of them is for around McMaster University because mm-hmm. I property there. I, I want to know what my property prices are. So for the first time in I don't know how long, I saw a listing mm-hmm. uh, around half million dollar mark. So already cheap yeah. uh, for that market. And I was like flipping through the pictures and the property's in the middle of a renovation. Yeah. The original kitchen's gone. Right? There's no kitchen. Yeah. The the drywall, um, the walls are already are, aren't even primed yet. They're yeah. getting ready to paint. The bathroom doesn't have a toilet. The, the the tile shower isn't grouty yet. Right? Yeah. Why would you post pictures like that unless you're desperate? Yeah, yeah. Right? Somebody got too far along in it and just someone got to, caught. Yeah. Uh, someone got caught trying to do a burr or a whip flip, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? They ran out of money, and then when we when we followed it up with the yeah. with the um, the sellers, and that that sounds like the story. They 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 borrowed money. They have a money partner. They need yeah, out. They need out. Yeah. So if this I'm is your master, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I'm a new investor, I'm looking for deals. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and I mean, picky. some people aren't going to have necessarily enough money to buy, but I mean, there's always the joint venture option for them with a family member probably mm-hmm. early on to, mm-hmm. to prove themselves and then and then expand yeah. out, outward from there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, everyone, I was talking to one of my clients actually, one of my more successful clients, and the, I don't have the quote proper, but the the, the essence of it was uh, mental peace, mm-hmm. or like mental stress basically, stress and maximum ROI. Yeah. Uh, well, stress and maximum ROI kind of go together. Mm-hmm. If you want maximum ROI, you're going to have, you're going to yeah. have a stressed uh, time. Yeah, right? it could be also be a lot of hours. Stressors, right? You're yeah, gonna have stressors. stressors for sure. Yeah, you could definitely remove some of those by taking less risky, quote unquote, investments. Yeah. But yeah, mean, for example, like investing closer to home, because I've never yeah. been opposed to someone investing in their own backyard. Yeah, uh, like for, that was the reason why I never personally invested in Alberta. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to get on a plane, partly because I'm lazy. Probably because a plane ticket will eat into my cash. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't like like when something goes wrong, if you have a property far away, you may need to just step in mm-hmm. and go find people. Like I don't mean physically go in and like clean up a mess that sewer backs up, but I mean go down and make new connections. And if it's a new market far away from you, that's a that's not a small commitment. Yeah. Like Cape Coral investing for me was not a small commitment. It took me three and a half months of like going to, you know, one or two a month meetups driving around and talking to people before mm-hmm. i said okay i'm ready to do something here mm-hmm. like you really gotta you really gotta be comfortable with a new market so well, not I, to be taken positive there <laughs> yeah the amount of diligence you did yeah. is way the more than i think the average person does no the i don't think so you yeah. did and also the experience you brought but in. based on based on having the experience of oh you can really yes. get screwed if you just jump into right. something and you don't know who to trust and who not to trust yeah. right and the financial resources you brought in yeah so to me that's not for a beginner not at all no yeah. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's something that uh, I did because it was my second time around going into the States. Mm-hmm. But uh, And your experience with construction. Yeah. And your... Right, yeah. I had a certain comfort with all team. that. Yeah, it didn't scare me, right? Some people think ground up for some reason. It's just like deer in the headlights when they get thrown that concept. Like there are people who have got a whole house, but the second it comes to digging a foundation, like no way, I'm not doing that. I just use that to my advantage. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad that there's so many people that had that hesitation because it actually works out really well for, for me. Like I... I feel like there's way less competition for that type of market and I can just basically sign checks mm-hmm. and and build now, which mm-hmm. I mean, coming from a general contractor background, that's actually really nice. I don't, I don't like having to do everything myself. So, so you asked me what I yeah. do as a beginner. Yeah. Like for example, if I'm a beginner, don't have a yeah. job or interested in a new career, yeah. why not learn a trade? You get a trade. Cause yeah. I know so many people who are successful real estate investors who are, who were in the trade. Yeah. Right. The comfort you have. Like when you've, when you've done that, it's just, it's like what scares me versus what doesn't scare me. Mm-hmm. And like my friend, Steve, he actually moved. He used to be in Alberta. He was working a full-time job, like making a decent salary. And uh, he was doing restorations. They were, you know, they would handle insurance claims for like mold and, and, you know, water damage and all that stuff. And I kept saying to him, like, man, you just need to go out and do this for yourself. Like you do everything you'd need to do to flip houses and you'd make way more flipping. So he did a couple in Alberta and then his wife got a new job in Texas. They moved and now he's flipping like four at a time in uh, in Texas. That's his full time gig, hiring it out. Love it. And he doesn't mind hiring because he he can oversee all these workers. He knows if their work is crap. He knows he if it's their good. language. He speaks their language. He's in the front because yeah. he knows the job. Yeah. And he's done the job before. Yeah. He just needed he needed a little push, but he had all the skills uh, to do it. Yeah. So I I think the same. Like get into the trades, 
do that even for a couple of years and then get into all the things around it. And then while you're doing it, you know, go to meetups and, mm-hmm. and talk to other investors and find out what they're investing in right now. Because like what's you, you obviously talk to a lot of people. Like what's your feel on what people are investing in right now? Like there's obviously the still people shit. buying. There's a lot of still people still buying. So what are they buying? Um, let's talk about some things I wouldn't do. Yeah. Like for example, I've never been comfortable with private lending. Okay. Uh, you know, like even like as much as I trust you, for example, mm-hmm. like your pro projects, just take that as an example, right? Nah, let's, let's do something simpler. Yeah. Like a London property, you're yeah. going to do a burr on it. Uh, as much as I like you, if you get hit by a bus, how does yeah. that project go? Yeah, right? I hear you. It's just, we I used to work in software, so we were yeah. always looking, for, like we're, we always know shit happens. Yeah. Right? And like, what's plan B if Andrew gets hit mm-hmm. by a bus? Yeah, you got to have right? one. Yeah, for sure. I, like like you're in the hospital because you got hit by a bus. Like Andrew, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna take that property from you because you're, mm-hmm. like, you're not finishing the project. You're not making payments. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's never really been my thing. Uh, so what people are buying now, and again, it depends on the individual. Like a lot of our clients who who can afford this, often because they've been in real estate a little bit longer, so they have larger, they have deeper pockets, mm-hmm. uh, and also just because it's the opportunity that's available now that wasn't available like forever with yeah. triplex conversions yeah now again that's something i've recommended to beginners like these are my clients that have been, been clients for a while they're yeah. comfortable doing renovation projects right they're, they're we're talking pretty decent budgets right like a basement conversion is over 100 grand yeah and also i'm encouraging our clients uh who don't want to do that to buy turnkey yeah because construction costs are still really high yeah. Right? So why? But if they're buying turnkey, it? are they? Are they? I guess they. If they put enough in, they're getting cash flow. Buy at least a turnkey duplex. Yeah. Right. Because also, like turnkey duplexes in Hamilton, for example, you can probably get them for seven fifty or less. Mm-hmm. Right. Six months ago, they are a mil. Like a, a turnkey, like recently renovated. Yeah. Well, so, recently within within the last five years. Within the last five. So okay. it's been it's been renovated with basement conversions done with permits. Okay. Per, so a current all, permitted conversion. Okay. Yes. So it's been yeah. done with permits. So it's yeah. fully legal. So right. those are seven fifty to buy now. What uh, what are they? Are they still renting for like four thousand forty five hundred for the for the up down? Rents are the highest they've ever been. Yeah, right. Because that's just the state of the economy. Yeah, interest rates are high. Yeah, the rents are obviously going to be high too. Yeah, people are pivoting to rentals. So we're seeing like upstairs two three bedrooms renting for like twenty three twenty four hundred. Mm-hmm. Basements renting for like eighteen. Right. Okay. So these are the highest rents we've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. So it's like forty one hundred then for the house. Yeah. And then yeah push back as much utility yeah. as you possibly can on on the customer. And, yeah. and then in this market, I'm trying to be picky. So I want some sort of upside for a potential for like a garden suite. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that the property can accommodate a garden suite. Even if I don't want to yeah. do it, I just know that if my property can accommodate it, mm-hmm. it'll be worth more. I was going to pull up my, my spreadsheet, but I realized it's not on that computer. But what's, uh, are you going to cash flow at that? Like, so if you're, if you're full down payment on the 700, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have like a 520 mortgage. Are you gonna well plus line transfers? So I don't know somewhere in that ballpark. It so might yeah. be small, yeah. Especially when like you just a for bit of cash test. flow, yeah. Even if you, uh, and then alternatively, mm-hmm. so again, I don't believe in black and white. Mm-hmm. There's a scale. Like yeah. you can do the duplex in like Burlington, for example. You're gonna pay more cash flow, even less. Yeah. Right. But being the fact it's closer to Toronto, like mm-hmm. lower risk. Or we can go further out, yeah. like a well in Ontario. Like a Belleville, Ontario. It's going to be so interesting to see how this investor market morphs and how people, like what people go for that's actually going to work. Like the market is still figuring itself out. Totally. Like the, the change is happening. Yeah. I still think there's the opportunity to go for that desperate seller. Uh, not not to take advantage. It, it sounds bad to say, uh, but they're willing to take a number. A certain number would be helpful to them. And that might be a number that works for you. Yeah. And if you guys can come up with a mutual agreement, there's an opportunity for people to to get into stuff well under market value, kind of like that wholesaling scenario almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and everybody wins, and now you have something that actually will cash right. flow. Right. And for that type of property, though, mm-hmm. you're probably taking on more stress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You might have to do reason, more work. Why, yeah. Why wouldn't that property? Well, sell? and yeah, right. and the biggest thing. Well, I mean. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't it sell? Right. You could obviously do some door knocking yourself. And then there's more work. More work with you're, that. You're that's see, that's annoying. People. Yeah, I don't see. I don't want to do that stuff. I really don't. So I believe there's always a spectrum. Yeah. Of what how much you work do you want to do? do? Yeah, it, the right. less work you want to do, you pretty much need to accept that you're going to earn less. You're going to earn less, 
Uh, but the, your return per your hour might be the same. Yeah, your return per hour might be right. the same. I, I think that we've been spoiled as real estate investors for so long that you know the work we did when you calculated the return, it was insane. Like the return really insane. on your dollars was insane. It was infinite because you get all your money out of those perfect burrs. Mm -hmm. Those days obviously don't seem like they're right now. Mm -hmm. They could come again mm -hmm. if we find the bottom of the market, if the if the market does bottom out in, in this coming year. Um, but there'll be some interesting opportunities at that point. Like, at what point do you think they're going to look at it and say, I mean, will Canada ever? Because they've actually, they're on record saying that they they don't care what it does to GDP growth. That's they're just, they're just going to keep increasing interest rates to control inflation, which I don't think they reasonably can unless they get, you know, like we said, get up into the mid teens or I don't more. I don't think they can make it that long because uh, yeah. I think something like each, each, Every percentage increase in interest rates, I think the interest payment on our debt is in the 50 billions of dollars, mm -hmm. right? Which, that's a lot of money. Yeah, they'll just print more to pay for it. Oh, well, let's not <laughs> even get into that. I, I, was reading in, I was reading into it because Bank of Canada, they, they hired social media people to like yeah. start... Like, Start putting out on Twitter, answering their most common questions. Yeah. How are you going I to pay will, for the increased debt? Yeah. The Bank of Canada does not print money. We take money out of our reserves. Okay, where your reserves come from? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no gold. It's a reserve of paper. <laughs> yeah, actually, they, the, the real answer is they have a third party print it <laughs> and then give it to them. Uh, Let's not even go into it because I don't even think they understand. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, of misunderstanding there. So I guess the question is, how far do they go? At what point is there enough of a populist pushback on like what you're doing is is just hurting everybody, which it's really what they've done. Um, you know, you can't keep doing it. And do we accept the inflation? Do they ever just accept the inflation? I think they do. Yeah, they accept some sort of, but some of the inflation has to come. Uh, you know, one of, one of the early issues of the pandemic was something I didn't realize. I don't think most people know is something something like 90 percent of the generic drugs that are manufactured are manufactured in china yeah so from a national security standpoint we're gonna need to if they're locked down yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need other manufacturers of generic yeah drugs. the dependency <laughs> as you, you pointed out earlier is just insane right? yeah so that that's all that's all going to have an effect here yeah. and we're just trying to navigate it as investors and say where's the bottom where where's our advantage in this whole market how do we create wealth for our families in this market if nothing else, like what? So, if I want to be political in my answer, I say choose your own hard asset, whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, we're still heavily real estate. Yeah, incredibly heavily real estate. But I do want to come talk to you about when I was talking about spectrum in terms of investments. Yeah. So, for example, because uh, uh, I have this one client super successful. Uh, he he's big on mental health. Mm -hmm. He wants maximum uh, peace of mind. Yeah. So he actually liquidated all of his real estate, all of it, last year. Okay. Like gradually. Okay. Right. And he's and for money though, because everyone still needs money. Uh, and he now rents uh, for like sixteen hundred bucks. No, I don't know how much. It, I don't know what his rent payment is. But he lives in a nice house in the Nanaimo, BC. Uh, but he put he put a bunch of his proceeds into the market, in the stock markets, dividend payers, mm -hmm. and now he uh, generates dividend income between ten and fifteen thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So that's Dividend income is generally the most tax optimized income you can take. Yeah. And it's over $10,000 a month. I think that'd be financial peace at a yeah. minimum for almost everybody. For a lot of people. Yeah. Depending on what your mortgage payment on your house is and stuff. He has yeah. no debts. Oh, yeah. So he's laughing. No debts, period. Yeah. Right. He doesn't even have a credit mm -hmm. card balance. He just pays it off every month. Right. So, yeah. So like we talk about like spectrum. We talk about mental health, stress. Mm -hmm. He's got none. Yeah. No stresses. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah and not to say he's not gonna get back in real estate right but, but i mean some people could do that kind of thing which is is great and i i totally get where you're coming from because I, i've often said on this podcast like you got to do what lets you sleep at night yeah. so if you see something happening in the market like for me like with my student rentals i saw something happening that i just wasn't comfortable holding that asset in that market mm -hmm. you know they could just shut down school and and you know then i don't have a tenant base mm -hmm. i didn't love it mm -hmm. Uh, That's so you, revenge you time now. You pivot. <laughs> I mean, now that things are coming back down, now I can start looking at maybe buying some stuff again. We'll, we'll see. Probably uh, not a bad time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We'll watch it over the next six months. And if I see some opportunities right back in, like I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of just paying attention to your market, paying attention to what happens. If you're a newbie, I think, like we said, it's kind of like more like a, 
JV, keep your eye out. If you're a newbie, you're going to have to invest the time because you either have time or money. You're bringing mm -hmm. one of those to the deal. Mm -hmm. And that time might be needed to go out and acquire expertise right. and then bring that to the deal. Um, or say if they're analytical type, yeah. partner with someone who's good on the tools. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, combine your combine yeah. your resources. One way or another, get into a deal. Learn everything you don't know yeah. because that's how you learn by getting into a deal. But it's got to work on paper. So you got to work with somebody who knows what they're doing and mm -hmm. make sure that that deal works. Mm -hmm. You know, don't do something dumb like I did early on and get into all kinds of bad deals and yeah. get stuck in them for five years to get yeah. the money back. You know, get a contractor that yeah. has skin in the game. Right? Yeah. You could offer even to partner with a contractor. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. Because many contractors are mm -hmm. contractors because they don't want to be investors. Right. Yeah. They don't want to put the ton. capital. Yeah. Maybe they don't have the capital. Right. One of the guys worked for me for years and years, always talked about real estate investing, never did it, mm -hmm. never owned any property. So he'd be a perfect one and mm -hmm. he would have been all over it. I just didn't really need that arrangement because he already worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, he would have been able to do that with somebody they could have partnered with him yeah. and, and made that deal work. So, um, yeah, I was just curious if you had any other thoughts on, on what people, you know, should be at least considering. Yeah, obviously, we're not going to give them advice, but what they should be considering. I think that's one possible um, avenue. And then, I don't know, anything else come to mind? I think, I, uh, I keep saying context is everything. Uh, I remember I remember my early journey as an investor, I bought some really old houses. Like mm -hmm. literally, like one of the first properties I bought was like built in like 1890s. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about home construction at the time. So yeah. literally it had a log foundation. Yeah. Right? But it was like, you know, probably like the fifth house I ever saw. Oh, it's legal. You know, oh, uh, oh, there's no realtor. Must be a good deal. Bought it. <laughs> Right, the the cap wood the, foundation, log wood log foundation, <laughs> dirt floor. Right, wow. Didn't know enough. Yeah. Did did not know enough. Did not realize the driveway was sloped towards the basement window. Yeah. <laughs> you know what though? That's like still salvageable. That's the interesting thing. A lot of people are afraid of that kind of thing, and that's almost an opportunity. Like a lot of people would see that, they'd be afraid. But I could have just bought something easy, something yeah. way easier. Yeah. Right. And my point is that uh, it's all relative. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, you know, when I became a realtor, seeing a hundred houses came pretty quickly, and mm -hmm. then I realized quickly realized what the top twenty percent was, and then yeah. my investment criteria completely changed. Then you start to see a deal, and I, that's one of the things I'm really excited about is we're going to start to see a lot more properties on the market. There's going to be a lot more opportunity for one that just slipped by, mm -hmm. like one that wasn't properly advertised, mm -hmm. that didn't get enough eyes on it, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you walk into it and you see, hey, that's a deal, and you can buy it. You, but you didn't need to have context to be able to say it's contact exactly. You have to have seen enough. Yeah. So now, yeah, to know I mean, what's rare to those who are actively looking, and getting to see more properties, and keeping an eye on it, and becoming mm -hmm. the expert in your market. Like there was a time where there was this one niche area that I was working with that anything that came up for sale, I knew it. I knew what it was worth. I could mm -hmm. offer on it without seeing it because I knew what I could pay for it, mm -hmm. just based on literally going on the Google My Maps and measuring it. <laughs> you could just measure with that little mm -hmm. measure tool, mm -hmm. and know okay, that's big enough. I can use that. Um, so that's the kind of confidence that um, that you can have if you know enough. And I think that those who want to take advantage of what's coming are going to need to have some level of that mm -hmm. context, like you said. Mm -hmm. See enough. Now, you asked me about the beginner thing as well. Mm -hmm. So again, thinking about investing in large, I started using this analogy of like Thanksgiving dinner, mm -hmm. right? What's the turkey? What's the turkey of your investments? Tofurkey in your case. <laughs> <laughs> the tofurkey. I, I don't so know. So first like, of all, yeah, what's the main course? Like what's the main <laughs> yeah, what's thing the you're main doing? Thing? Yeah. What's where's where's your greatest opportunity? Right? Yeah. In my experience in real estate, it, the, yeah. making your first million, I don't know anything that's easier than real estate. Yeah. Can you think of anything easier than making your first million? No. I mean, as long as the market's going up. If the market's going down, it might, you know, be a different world. But I mean, as long as I've been in real estate uh, as an investor, the market's at least been going up somewhat even if it was mostly stagnant it's mm -hmm. it's never been going down mm -hmm. this is the first time mm -hmm. that in, in the entire time i've been an investor i guess 2017 briefly 2020 brief. briefly yeah. and now yeah. yeah but i you know it's tough to say but yeah i don't think so still because you've got that leverage principle if you buy quality real estate um our issues with supply aren't going anywhere yeah. as we've said mm -hmm. i probably sound like a broken record to some people uh, this right. is why i keep i keep thinking it is going to go back up eventually yeah. it can't stay down but yeah. it could it can hurt for a, for a, or a time, yeah. and I don't make know sure how long that time good. is. Yeah, okay. make sure it's rentable. Yeah, make sure you raise your rents. Right. Yeah, but those zero down deals people were doing. Oh my god! I don't know. It's they're gonna be <laughs> a lot you, harder. Have you mentioned it on the pod, like 
a lot, a lot of those people are gone now. Like a lot of those investors are, are gone. Are they? I mean, I don't know. We're going to have to find some of them, dig them up and interview them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think, and that's, that's the truth. But real estate yeah. investing is uh, if you did not do your homework, make sure the property made sense on paper on a yeah. zero down stress yeah. test it. Uh, you know, say you thought your renovation would take six months. What if it took 12? What yeah. if it took two years to get your permits? What if, yeah. right? Like we're in Burlington right now. Mm -hmm. The mayor canceled all developments for one year, right? Serious? That was a while. That was, that was like 2019. Oh, okay. And yeah. now ADI, who's yeah. all in the paper, but losing their builder's license, like they're all, <laughs> like they're, yeah, they're going to lose a builder's license. They might lose a builder's license because they've been asking buyers to pay more, to kick in more yeah. because of all these delays. Yeah. What was the delay caused less. by? Our yeah. local government. Yeah, being shut down. The mayor yeah. who is voted by the people. Yeah. And she ran on a campaign of being more nimby than the, than the, than the mayor before her, who yeah. was so nimby, he personally showed up at the appeals to stop developments. Yeah. He was that he was that nimby himself. Clearly it didn't work. Didn't man. work. They're going like nuts with developments now in, in Burlington. Well, they might lose their license now, so they're, they're yeah. not gonna build some of the buildings. So oh, okay. less supply. Anyways, yeah. I'm going on a tangent. Yeah. Um Yeah, newbie. I don't know anything easier than making million than a million dollars in real estate. But there's many ways to invest in real estate. Yeah. You know, I do some passive uh development stuff. I do some REITs. Yeah. I'd argue McDonald's, my stock is is real estate. Yeah. Because they, they're based essentially commercial real estate company. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's so many ways to do real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just there's a spectrum. So I think uh, I think for a newbie is actually to, you know, talk to someone who's been around, has mm -hmm. a lot of experience to find what fits them. Yeah. Right. Uh because uh yeah. The the a lot, of, a lot of these people who went try to go full time, mm -hmm. they're gone, they're in financial yeah. ruins, right? They risked it all, right? Uh, and I, I I feel terrible for them. Uh, versus, you know, we my uh, at at our business we focus yeah. primarily on pretty boring stuff, single family homes that are affordable. Yeah, and then we do some value adds, either student rental or like basement mm -hmm. apartment with potential. I mean, and now these days we want some upside potentially from a garden suite. Yeah. Right. And then going forward for the, for our deep pocket clients, triplex conversions. Yeah. Right? Because that will be like the the because the cost per square foot will be the best we can get. Yeah. For like a triplex. Yeah. Um, we're trying to we want to I perfect world try to be able to build, put a triplex within an existing building. Within okay. Right. Um, but again, and this is within a certain area of Hamilton that allows for that, right? Like uh, we have clients doing well in in, in Belleville. We okay. do the Garden Suite model, Branford, mm -hmm. uh, Hamilton's uh, coming along. Well, they allow laneway houses, right? In Hamilton, they allow the laneway houses already, but there's so few laneways. That, yeah, and and they don't have, and there's no laneways in the areas. Is, it is it really? It's really hard to uh, to meet their bylaw requirements as well. Yeah, and then of course parking, parking's always yeah. an issue. That's, so you're having to go for a minor variance for for a lot of stuff there. Yeah. And then the NIMBY thing is still the, there's, there's still a lot of NIMBYs, so they, yeah, so they'll uh, make your life difficult rightfully so like i mean as an investor we always want to just like you know <laughs> kind of get mad at them but i mean if you've lived somewhere for so long then all of a sudden somebody's going to put up a higher density house next to you i get it i get it it would bug me too that's why i want to live in the country though <laughs> you know and so it's from an investor yes standpoint it's, it's certainly not mm -hmm. fun i don't say it necessarily hated it i just i just it's it's the game yeah it's part of the, so game. the thing about yeah. if nimbies are successful it yeah. makes our existing real estate more expensive yeah Oh, it does. Yeah. One of the things I've shared so many times is when I got shut down on the, you know, I was labeled the big bad Toronto developer, wasn't from Toronto and uh, lived around the corner from the house that I was trying to do. I was trying to knock it down. Uh, the neighborhood found out, made the you know front page of the London Free Press with 40, 50 people standing on my front lawn saying, not in our backyard, don't keep us in the dark. And uh, it was just, uh, it's a wild experience. But what they did is they passed the heritage control by law and they, they basically devalued their entire neighborhood because it was no longer developable. So every house, all these houses falling down, like uh, crawl space with like wonky floors, couldn't tear them down. Couldn't, you know, you, there's nothing you could do with them. And I don't think they, people don't always think it that far through is, is the point. So they got emotional, man. emotional. Yeah. Which is the number one lesson we take from that is don't get emotional about investing, not getting emotional about, about your real estate, mm -hmm. staying focused. And I think for mm -hmm. you, like, You've done this long enough. What you're like, 15 years in as an investor? Been for a while, yeah. Yeah, so, and yeah, I was investing 2007, 2008. 
Yeah. It was just kind of so like, you went through all that. Yeah, the, the, but it was kind of decline. fluky. No idea. No idea how the market How much of a behave. decline was there for you? Like, was there stuff you were holding that went down? Didn't even notice because I didn't care because my rents were going up. Because you were just, just continuing to rent. Yeah. We, not just did we continue to rent. We actually had turnover. And then we yeah. were kind of pretty newbie at that point. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Our tenants leaving us. It was our worst tenant, too, though. Like, we yeah. wanted, like, they were, they were, they were clean and paid everything. They were just yeah. so needy. Yeah. Probably because the house is so, <laughs> so old. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like, like yeah. Um. So she left, put up the ad, three immediate inquiries, yeah. right? We raised yeah. the rent by like, I forget, not even much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what we found was we not, not, or just wasn't immersed in it, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't understand like, well, it's credit crisis. No one can get a mortgage. Yeah. What do they all do? No one's getting a mortgage. Everyone's renting, yeah. Everyone's renting. Yeah, pivots to rents, right? Like, I mean, people. I heard people say even in Florida, like when that crisis happened, like rents didn't really go down back in 2008. Like yes, credit no, because they, they all went, needed to rent. Values went through the floor. They had yeah. they had houses that cut down to ten percent of their their former value. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we weren't hit like that in Canada at that time. No, just yeah. too many immigrants coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, fortunately, down there, like things like people are moving in and in and in mm-hmm. to that market. So mm-hmm. hopefully, we stay strong there too. But uh, yeah, obviously, going back to it, can't be inv- emotional about it. Mm-hmm. Like got to be thinking long term. But I do get people reaching out to me that want to like. They want to go full time in real estate. Like they're they're working in something they don't want to be in. They love real estate. Yeah, they just get another job. Yeah, just get another job for now. Is that the advice? Like I, sometimes I don't know what to tell them. I mean, I look at it and I say, well, you know what? There are active businesses within real estate, but everything's a risk. But at a certain age, maybe some people are okay taking that risk. You might have to go back and get a job if things don't work out. Yeah, try it. Yeah, you can try. Yeah. Um, hey, it's what I did. I just dove into it. But the, the thing about full time is. Uh... You know, a lot of full-time people I know, they have to flip for income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is not the easiest to do, thing right to do. <laughs> Unless you're buying exceptional deals. So you can still flip is, in this market if you're yes. getting exceptional deals. Not the easiest thing to do either. No, of course. You need you need time and expertise. Yeah. You need to be willing to go either knock on doors, paper neighborhoods, yeah. do whatever it takes to yeah. go get buy better deals. And, you, need to be, and yeah. you may even be in a market where there's less people looking for that, where less people are doing that. Sure. Right. Because, for example, yeah. in Hamilton, there's tons of people flying it. There's tons yeah, of yeah, it's targeting with Google. I mean, ads. although are they still are they still doing that now? I'm sure the good ones are. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I, I gotta have a wholesaler on the show and see where things are at. <laughs> I'd imagine. Goods. I imagine the big ones are still. Yeah, still going. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but again, for the beginner, uh, I also w- I would also caution the beginner: cash flow is not what it used to be. Yeah. Right. Like, like I mentioned, like our deeper pocket clients are trying to go to triplex conversions. Yeah. Let's try to generate cash flow. Yeah. Right. Uh, and also on the other side, I know people generating better cash on cash returns, but just buying dividend stocks. Right. And that's what I've seen like crunching numbers recently. And we'll do more on this show soon. I actually have some stuff coming down the pike for that. But the, the return is not very good anymore. Like cash on cash is very low so yes you you would be and, seeing and compared to risk <laughs> compared to risk <laughs> and seeing time and then you you might even want to build a negative appreciation a depreciation into your numbers what yeah. if my bought property goes down by two yeah. percent a year instead of up that's a leverage two percent a year a leverage two percent so right. if you build all that in what do my numbers look like yeah. and perspectives change yeah. so um, I'm going to be focusing a lot on this next little bit on exposing kind of what opportunities I see and what what's there and, and maybe a path that might make sense, what doesn't mm-hmm. make sense, and we all got to adapt. And mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of learning over the next little mm-hmm. bit. So we go back to the, what I would tell a beginner: mm-hmm. if they don't like their job, yeah. get another job. Yeah, like the the vacancy, the job vacancy, I think is six percent mm-hmm. in Canada. Our unemployment rate is four point five point four. Yeah, right. You want another job, you can get another job. Yeah. Uh, I see nothing wrong with someone working for the next five, 10 years, yeah. investing in real estate as a side hustle, build, make your couple million there. Yeah. Tr- flip that over into dividend paying stuff. And you're assuming that the decline isn't forever. Like that strategy works if the decline is only, say, for the next year. And then at that point, things start to level off and hopefully even start going up again. Yeah. But and if then, you're in it for 10 years. Yeah. You're going to pay off some of your mortgage. Your property is going to, even if it goes up by say 2% on average over those 10 years or 1%, 1%, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be up something. You're going to have paid down Mm -hmm. a couple percent a year on your mortgage Mm -hmm. and slowly but surely getting ahead. Right. So we we talk about, I think there's more risk in the real estate market than there is in the job market. 
Yeah, that's probably true because there's a lot of people hiring right now. Unlike other recessions, this recession, people still need workers. Like, yes, there are people being laid off, but there's mm -hmm. still lots of places where people have, you know, hiring signs and can't find people. And I think statistically, we just had one of our greatest retirement cohorts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're actually losing employees. Yeah. Empl we're losing empl people. And also, I, I, like, I looked it up. Mm -hmm. uh, the participation rate. So uh, for um, the listeners benefit, that is the employed and the people looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. It's been on the city decline yeah. for the last 20 years. That's scary stuff. Different conversation, but totally scary stuff. Are we just lazy as Canadians? I think a lot of people defeated. I think that that's what, that, what it is. Why? Well, back in the day, it's like, think the American dream, what the American dream was. The white picket fence, you could have the house, the, you know, the garage, wife can stay at home, you can raise a family, you only need one, one working parent. I think a lot of people look at it, you know, the 35 year olds living in their parents' basement say, why would I try at this point? You know, when I can get into social justice causes instead, I mean, I don't, I mean, if I get a job, I'm look, I'm working these numbers out. I can't afford the mortgage payment. Yeah. So they're defeated. What's yeah. the point? Why bother? I think the why bother mentality hurts the most. It hurts. And, and, and maybe the nice thing about these property values coming, coming down is maybe some people start to see, hey, come down a bit further. I might just be able to afford a home. But I mean, with the mortgage rates higher, <laughs> it, it kind of makes that less likely. But a potential we'll upside. Potential upside. There's there's always a silver lining if you're looking for it. So mm -hmm. you just got to find it. So. Yeah. so I think, I think uh, so even though we talked about real estate risk, yeah, job risk, like, there's no time better to have a job yeah. in probably the next 10 years. Yeah. Because also in 10 years, um, I, I saw the gentleman speak who wrote uh, the book called The Great Resignation. Okay. Uh, his estimation is... Uh, this the, the million job vacancy, million yeah. jobs vacancy will not re resolve itself until AI okay. is actually good enough to actually take over. Yeah, we've actually seen a lot so of cases where AI needs sucks. Good help. They need good help. Yeah, so that's that's very common. So yeah, I agree with you. You can find probably find something else. Um, yeah, people don't need to do what I did and just dive right into it. But I was active. I was flipping. Like that's that was you know ultimately what I got into to make it work. So all right, Irwin, I wanted to transition into what you've got going on right now currently um anything you wanted to talk about because i know you got your conference coming conference up is coming up yeah. november 12th yeah tell us about that november 12th right november 12th it's a yeah. saturday it's basically an all-day thing okay. uh, it's so we ser cherry and i surveyed our databases as to what people want to learn about mm -hmm. of course the vast majority want long-term real estate uh, over 80 oh, close to 90 percent respondents want to learn about real estate yeah. number two topic they want to learn about was stocks yeah right so we have Derek foster coming out you know, retired at the age of 34, Canada's youngest retiree, and he's truly retired. Yeah. Doesn't even have a cell phone, right? He does, like, his, uh, he does no work. You yeah. can argue he does some work because like, he enjoys, he really likes stocks, so he likes to research them. Yeah. But again, incredibly passive. Yeah. Does no work, right? Does no active business, anything. Uh, so we have him explaining how he managed the last 20 years uh, to stay retired, mm -hmm. including how he's, basically beating every professional portfolio manager out there right now by yeah. being positive on the year yeah. when the market's down 20%. Uh, we have uh, a crypto speaker. A lot of people want to learn about cryptocurrency. Even if folks don't want to learn about cryptocurrency, they should still understand blockchain mm -hmm. and uh, what it means to the future. Uh, and also, there's always other means to invest. Uh, like, for example, I, I've been saying for a, for a while during the run-up, the crypto craze, yeah. that I thought it was a bubble because it reminded me just like the tech bubble. Mm -hmm. that I've lived through before. Uh, but there will be survivors. Yeah. And look who the survivors were, like eBay and Amazon. Mm -hmm. They were exchange places. They didn't have any inventory. Yeah. Right? They did very well, did they not? Right? Still around. So our speaker on cryptocurrency is actually mm -hmm. the chief operating officer of BitBuy, okay. which is Canada's first and largest registered crypto exchange. Okay. Right? So he's an entrepreneur as well because they recently just exited to Kevin O'Leary's fund, Wonderfy, okay. for $206 million. <laughs> Nice. Uh, you know, he's based, he's pretty much Canada's leading authority on the crypto space. Yeah. Right. Um, based on the current where we've gone so far. And um, recently, have we talked about several investors have gone under? Many small businesses have gone under. Mm -hmm. So Cherry is talking to um, cash flow first. Yeah. Right? I think it's a strong, <laughs> I think something that's close to your heart. Yeah. Big, big on Thinking that. cash yeah. flow first. So Cherry will, give, will be giving a talk on that. She's actually already practiced. They've already her accounting practices already practiced the um, 
some of these some of these uh, strategies and methods on some of their clients that are in the real estate space, and their minds were just blown, mm-hmm. right? They were just blown. Like we had a, a contractor that you and I both know go back to their bookkeeper and like look at all this and like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be talking about real estate. I've yeah, been around for a little bit. So it's a mix of, of all that. You're still calling it Wealth Hacker, right? Wealth Hacker Conference because yeah. uh, to me, Wealth Hacker means we're trying to get people, hardworking, regular people on their fastest path to whatever yeah. their financial goal is. Yeah, so set the goal. If it's you know a certain income level, then kind of work backwards as to what needs to be achieved exactly and, it. And, and make it happen. And and I can see how yeah, stocks may play a piece in that, especially if the market's down, you have yeah. an opportunity to uh, to buy in at a right. lower price and and you know a lot of dividend stocks like bank mm-hmm. stocks and things like that could probably do a little bit better for you for yield we were talking about yeah. heating costs right so one yeah. of the stocks i By hold energy this stocks. is advice yeah i own enbridge yeah so they have, they have pipelines oh yeah they have like a monopoly on the market where they operate right yeah. so I mean, and how easy is it to get a pipeline built in canada not that easy right so i mean yeah there's a lot of logic in that right what's the yield on that right now the dividend 6.7 percent yeah cap rates on multifamily apartment buildings is like four or five Oh yeah, like cash on cash in real estate right now. I mean, and I'm just talking like general, the last few deals I crunched in the local area. Mm-hmm. For sure, this is not across Canada. But, no, not, no. But no. it does make it harder. It, it's hard to get that cash on cash right mm-hmm. now. A 6% cash on cash, you'd be mm-hmm. doing pretty darn good compared to a lot of investments. So Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I think a more holistic approach needs to be taken yeah. to wealth creation. Well, and this is why a lot of people would do like private mortgage lending. I know you don't like it, but uh, but that that was kind of where that fit in because that kind of offset people's cash flow. So, but of course, everyone has different comfort levels, and, and a dividend yeah. stock like like that, like that'd be something I'd be comfortable with. Yeah, or like Telus. Yeah, right. You know, because they have infrastructure. Do you have a cell phone up. on you? Yes, I do. Are you ever going to stop having a cell phone? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> or not? You, but we're not representative yeah. of the general public. Yeah. Right. Will the general public ever not have a cell phone? Will uh, they ever not, not have yeah. internet? No, they're going to have it. Yeah. Right? Can you get more recession proof? They're essentially a utility. Yeah. So these type of topics, digging into that, going through the logic of it, that's that's what uh, what you're going to get but into. But also there. how we arrived at this point. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> as, a, as a student of, of investing, mm-hmm. I study rich people. Yeah. And one thing I noticed around high net worth people is the more rich they are, the yeah. less real estate they own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe that they made a lot of money in real estate, but as you get richer, yeah. what do you want more of? You want more of your time and peace back. So they get rid of it a bit. That's interesting because I've, I've talked to accountants and like some of the accountants that they got into real estate investing mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. well, I just asked, you know, the, the, you know, the main CA that works at the firm, what do they see most that makes people wealthy? And they're like, they all have real estate. Yeah, they all have real estate. Obviously, to make that's you a big part of it. That's a big to part make of you it, wealthy. Yeah. How much yeah. cash flow does it provide them? Depends, really right. does, right? I've, and I've been on the you know the cash flow chase to a certain degree. You know, I'm wanting to go, and there are markets to have it, and mm-hmm. you know, there's ways to acquire that. But I agree, there's there's also other ways to do it. Other ways to do it, yeah, and uh, yeah. So it's cool. It's cool that you're doing an approach that's a, l- a little bit more holistic, not just mm-hmm. one you know one methodology. There's many, exactly. And then holistic is actually yeah is a great segue into our keynote speaker, who's Jesse Itzler. So he hustled when he was young. Okay. If you Google him, he's worth up between two, three hundred million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, he's a Jewish guy from New York. He's won an yeah. Emmy, uh, which, which is a music award yeah. for rap music. <laughs> okay. Uh, he started uh, Marquee Jets, which was since bought by NetJets. Which mm-hmm. NetJets is owned by Warren Buffett. Mm-hmm. Right? Marquee Jets was a. The analogy I use is it's it was like the Uber of private jets. Okay. And and that's actually Sarah Blakely was a customer of Marquee Jets. That's how I met Sarah Blakely. Sarah Blakely being the the founder owner of uh, Spanx. Okay. Since yeah. exited for over two billion dollars to Blackstone, mm-hmm. not BlackRock, uh, Blackstone. Yeah. So she's worth over a bill, uh, and she's a very attractive lady. So he's a very successful person. He partnered in Zico Water. Zico Water. If you've probably bought it, okay, because it was available in co- coconut water, All and right. it was carried by Costco. Gotcha. I don't know how Costco you are. I haven't Costco lately, but uh, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he's a very successful, successful, entre- successful entrepreneur. Yeah. But what also what I found about successful people is their priorities change. Yeah. As uh, I only learned recently, for example, him and Sarah never talk business when they're together. Okay. Which I think is probably healthy <laughs> for their relationship. Yeah. And also, he made the point uh, when you when a hit for him. He believes 
uh, everyone has their own idea of success. Mm-hmm. You know, in our real estate community, people will talk about how many doors they have. Yeah. Really, I think they should be counting about how much cash flow they have. Oh, whatever. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> the, the doors make people feel inferior when yeah. you know that's not that's totally not right. you know not apples to apples. But go ahead. Oh, and, and the yeah. same thing with like oh, I own hundred properties. How much negative cash flow are you? <laughs> yeah, how, how's that work? Yeah, I mean, again, the people got to get out of this comparing themselves game. But no, yeah. take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, remember, remember why we got into this mm-hmm. is that we all got into this for cash flow, mm-hmm. right? Um, so never forget that. But anyways, Jesse determines success. He has several buckets for success, like relationships, family, yeah. investments, business, you know, and then for him, like doing cool stuff. Yeah. Right? So for example, his, any business he does now is, it's for more self-interest. Gotcha. He's yeah. For fun, right? Yeah. For fun. And, and yeah. I um, like all these conferences and all these groups out there. Mm-hmm. It's always like rah rah, make money, yeah yeah, make money, right? But that's not why we want to make money. Yeah. Uh, um, every client, so I know I work with investors every day. Generally, they're capitalists, mm-hmm. but when they tell me what their objectives are, it's usually to retire comfortably. Yeah. Retire their spouse, pay for university for their kids, you know, donate to charity yeah. their church. Like it wasn't about rah rah making a million bucks. Yeah yeah. Yeah, there's obviously a goal. There's a reason for it. Yeah. So, but ultimately, okay, so, that's what the goal is. Right. Not about making money. Yeah. Right. Okay. So he's going to be speaking on that. And um, where do people find more information? So I sent you a link in your email. So, you so got have, that today? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You so, sent it to so for example, we have a discount code. For, that's yeah. Heinz. Okay. H i n e s. Okay. All right. So if folks are listening, they want to go wealthhacker.ca. And they go go through to check out for the tickets. They can use Heinz, or okay. I gave you a link. So a lot of people can't find, under, understandably so. If the, if the link is there, I'll make sure it's in the show notes. The link is better. Yeah. Because you click on it, it and goes, it's already got the discount code. The discount in. applies yeah, to okay. it, and that'll go to the best deal that we currently that we have currently. Okay. Uh, but folks should understand, uh, the price goes up. Yeah. As we get closer to the conference. So okay. Honestly, don't delay. So as of airing this episode, I believe there's exactly four weeks. So. Oh my God! Don't do that. Don't take Listen. any time. Don't waste any time if you're uh, if you're looking to go. God, this stress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a here's a tip for beginners. Yeah. Don't do conferences. <laughs> yeah. Can I share? Do you have time for a quick story? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Andy, not Andrew. Andy, our AV guy. I met him the morning of the, our event back in 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's an older British guy, and I hired him through our plant event planner. So I never yeah. met him. We hired him because he had massive experience. He's done Tony yeah. Robbins, Celine Dion, Cirque du Soleil, right? Big productions. Yeah. And he comes at 6.30, 7.30, 7.30, because I show up early because I wanted to walk, feel the stage and all that sort of stuff, get ready for the stage, stage fright. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he comes to me, Erwin, what did you do here? I'm like, what do you mean, what did I do here? He said, you have all these people coming. What did you do? I'm like, I don't know. We advertised. Mm-hmm. He goes, first year conferences. They all lose a hundred thousand dollars their first conference. Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I've been doing this for a long time. They uh, they underestimate how many tickets they can sell. They lose a hundred grand. They might break even the next year. Yeah. So he was shocked how many people we had out. Oh, I was shocked. I was I was impressed. And the, and the you know just going back to to what I said before, yeah, totally sincere like point of view I have about you is like, man, you pull it off. Like even your podcast, like now everybody go check that out and and see the level of of Irwin's podcast and like the pro, like the professional quality so i just was on your podcast probably beyond that bef- maybe a release before this one will i'm not sure it should draw actually you're dropping on monday i think okay yeah so go check that out uh check out the setup i mean that's like i got some podcast envy now uh with that setup so uh very impressed i think it's it's all about entrepreneurship man like i i see you doing things and you're doing it knowing that anything you're going to do, you're going to do it well. And I see you consistently pull that off, which is why I think it's so great to have you on the show and share, you know, how, how you think and how you pull this all together, which we do need to dig into more of the entrepreneurial side, but uh, we'll save that for, uh, for next time, I guess. Let me see one point. Yeah. Successful entrepreneurs provide value, Mm -hmm. right? So I'll apply that, I'll apply that to the real estate world, right? What is most valuable? What is in short supply? Housing. Yeah. Yeah. We provide that. That's why yeah. we make good money doing it. Yeah, it's all about solving a problem. That's being an entrepreneur is just finding a way to solve people's problems. Right. And take the conference, for example, mm-hmm. which is basically a combination of all my businesses. Yeah. Right. If we can help people get towards those their financial goals, because yeah. their goals are retire more comfortably, 
yeah. hire earlier, retire their spouse, pay for the university, their kids' university. I have a significant track record of doing that. That's why we've done okay. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, a lot of people want to defend their wealth, so they need an accountant. Yeah. They need to open corporations. Yeah. Yeah, right. so Cherry will be uh, will be on here. She's an accountant. So yeah, that's your wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so we're going to have her on again. She was on episode 92, I believe. So a lot of people. That's actually one of the most popular episodes I have. Uh, she's the, pretty popular. She's uh, way yeah, more popular than I am. On YouTube, especially because she, she launched her YouTube channel. So now I think I get a lot of traffic because of that to the video. But uh, I just saw the other day. I think it was one of the most popular videos that I had on the, uh, on YouTube. Account, accounting is hard to explain. Yeah. And it's hilarious because yeah. she came to Canada as you know, age of 15, barely speaking English, like mm-hmm. probably the same level of yours and I's French. Okay. Right. And uh, she explains accounting in ways that people understand, even with yeah. her accent. Yeah. 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 So I'm excited to have her back on. She can tell us what's changed and and uh, give us a crash course and, and what's uh, what's going on. So, um, all right, Erwin, I think we're uh, a little over time now, so we better wrap her up. But um, anything else you wanted to share before we, uh, we close it down? Uh, yeah, I think the lesson here during this crash has been have some cash. The whole like cash is trash thing, as inflation is killing our our cash. It, uh, you still need it. You still need it. Yeah, just like oil. <laughs> well, you that. know, you know what? Like <laughs> ca- cash now more than yeah. more than ever. Yeah. Like even though it's being inflated away yeah. for real estate buying power, it's it's valuable. So it's valuable, yeah. and um, you know, it's life right now. And yeah, yeah. A lot of terms are not. A lot of these old rules, like like j- the acronym for job being just over broke. Yeah. That ain't true right now. <laughs> People with yeah. jobs are doing plenty fine. Yeah. Lots of investors are broke now. Yeah. Right? Well, multiple sources of income, right? That's what yeah. it, always what it's been about. You can't be dependent on one source of income. Exactly. So. Cool. All right, Erwin. Thank you very much. Appreciate this. Thanks and, for doing this, Andrew. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll obviously be doing it again. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Anytime. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Please make sure to share this episode far and wide. Help it help more people. I really appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.